So welcome to the Anime and Manga News for the week ending January 5th, 2012. Starting with a bunch of announcements from Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll has announced licenses for a whole slew of TV series, including DC3, that's Da Capo 3, uh, GDGD Fairies 2, The Unlimited uh, Hyobu Kyosuke, uh, The Hakenden Toho Haken Ibun, the new Hakenden series, uh, Mayu, as well as Orashura Romantic, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Orashura. So all of those will be streaming on Crunchyroll coming up soon, sure enough. Uh, as usual, Crunchyroll sort of getting on, on the things with that. Uh, we also have a bit more information on the second season of uh, Railgun. Uh, the second season of Railgun will air in 2013. So I guess we don't have to wait a full year for the season two of Railgun. Uh, that was on an actual uh, advertisement for uh, Rail, uh, Railgun season two. So it will premiere sometime in 2013. Yay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, let's see here, uh, over in, I wonder some manga news, actually, a lot of manga news this, uh, this past week. Uh, Picture Box has confirmed that it's going to release, uh, the Shigeru Sugiura manga of The Last of the Mohicans. Yes, the James Fenimore Cooper novel was adapted into a manga in 1974 by Shigeru Sugiura, and it will be released on April 30th for $20 US, uh, which means you'll probably get it for about 12 um, now, uh, Shigeru uh, Sugiura's works have been released in, in English, but no full book-length works. This will be uh, the first book-length Sugiura work uh, in English. It'll be translated by Ryan Holmberg, and, who will also provide an introductory essay for it. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, uh, th this was not the first adaptation of Last of the Mohicans that Sugiura did. He, he made one in 1953, which sold uh, about 60,000 copies, which was a huge amount for, for, the, for 1953. That's a big, big sale. So uh, he ended up doing some uh, more surreal works later on and then did uh, This Last of the Mohicans uh, in 1974, which is also in that somewhat more surreal style. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, and uh, th now another thing here, Picture Box has also confirmed that uh, this will be part of the... Uh, the Tencent manga line from Picture Box, where they want to republish a lot of the post-war comics that Japan uh, that was released in Japan, uh, you know, not long after World War II. So we'll be seeing more of this kind of stuff, some some things from the foundational uh, uh, years of modern manga back, uh, uh, you know, after World War II. So very cool to hear that. So keep your eye on Picture Box for more interesting stuff, manga manga wise. Uh, also some news that Motoka Murakami will be uh, launching a new manga series in March. Uh, Murakami also wrote Jin and Musashi no Ken. Uh, and interestingly, this will be about a manga, uh, manga creator, a woman manga creator, who started drawing manga before World War II. It was not a time when women generally did much of anything besides housework, to be, to be honest. Um, so, a very unusual career choice, since it's going to be a manga about that concept. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, uh, Murakami's works have seen quite a few adaptations recently. Two live-action TV series of Jin, and plus a Korean live-action uh, TV series that was also streamed on Crunchyroll. Um, and then a stage play adaptation, I believe. Uh, um, so, yeah, pretty, pretty darn cool. So, uh, more from Murakami coming up soon. Uh, unfortunately, the Gurren Lagann manga will end this year. Kotaro Mori uh, has tweeted on Monday, uh, I believe that was, yeah, uh, uh, this past Monday, that the uh, Gurren Lagann manga adaptation will end in 2013. And the plan is for the final volume to ship um, when the rebroadcast of Gurren Lagann ends in Japan, um, which means, uh, kind of hard to say, it's, uh, it starts the rebroadcast January, uh, actually today, uh, over in Japan. So if however long that's gonna, gonna run, they're going to uh, keep the manga and try to finish them up both at the same time. So, kind of interesting there. Uh, also, some news. Uh, Shin Takahashi, the guy who wrote this little thing called Saikano, you may be familiar with, um, is drawing a new one-shot manga called Spika Hokago no Chisano Hoshi, a little after-school star, uh, in a weekly shonen Sunday this year, a very big uh, shonen magazine over in Japan. Also starting a new two-chapter manga 
uh, with a, a very long name. Uh, the story of a little shopkeeper, a bookstore in, in that shopping district, basically. Um, so still doing some work, um, besides the amazing work on Saikano and, and other things like that. Uh, some uh, also some some manga news. Uh, C three Boo, uh, also known as Special Measures Unit Stella Girls Academy High School's C three Club, is uh, coming up for an anime pretty soon. This is a apparently sort of a, a, a screwball comedy manga about uh, basically a a club that that plays a survival games using BB guns and airsoft and things like that. So it's about a, a sort of a paintball club, roughly. Well, I guess an airsoft club. Uh, BB Gun Club. Um, so it should be interesting to see where, where that goes. Sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, let's see here. Let's jump back over here and look at the New York Times manga bestseller list for the last week of December. Last full week of December. Number one at the very top, Maximum Ride number six. The James Patterson uh, work, uh, art by Narai Lee. Uh, currently at number one, as it was the, the previous week. Followed uh, in the number two slot by Blood Lad number one, then Naruto number 58, uh, Mudoka Magica number three, Naruto number 59, then Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, Alice in the Country of Hearts, Pandora Hearts, Bleach, and Black Bird. Interesting there's no One Piece on the list. Kind of surprising there. It usually does well no matter the time. Uh, let's see here, moving on, uh, some uh, nice news over here. Udon Entertainment has announced it will be releasing the Summer Wars material book and artworks books this spring, uh, uh, arriving uh, May and, uh, uh, sorry, April and May. Uh, they're both about 200 pages and contain art and other behind-the-scenes materials about Summer Wars. So pretty darn cool. Um, it will include art by uh, Takahito Harada, did this guy, um, and uh, looked at his uh, creative process behind uh, work in the books. That's, that's pretty neat. Um, I'm sorry, no, that's separate. The, um, I misspoke there. So we have the, the, the Summer War stuff. Separately, there's going to be a Takahito Harada art book. Sorry, my mistake. Uh, moving on to some uh, sort of interesting side news. We've got this about uh, the the Japanese TV station uh, NHK uh, has a radio show where they ask folks to vote for the best anime heroine, as in heroine girl, um, and they announced that uh, just this uh, kind of Wednesday night, which I think would have been uh, either this past week or the week before. And so folks voted on who was the, the best anime heroine. Um, I'm going to go in reverse order on this one. Number 10 was Rei Ayanami from Evangelion. Number 9, Haruhi Suzumiya. Fine choice. Number 3, Rukia from Bleach. Number 7, Madoka Kaname from Madoka Magica. Number 6, Makoto Misaka from Railgun. Uh, number 5, Yui Hirasawa from Kayon. Number 4, a, a wonderful classic choice, Sakura Kinemoto from Cardcaptor Sakura with 10% of the votes. Next, uh, Fate Testarossa from Nanoha at 12. Uh, number 2 was Homura. Madoka Magic with 14% of the vote, but with 44% of the vote, by far the fan favorite best anime heroine was, of course, Haruka Amami from Idolmaster. What can I say? Can't complain. Haruka's a fun character. Uh, finally, on a more serious note, uh, I, I mentioned, I believe in our, the, the, the previous uh, video here, that Kamaket had asked all of the dojinchi circles that were doing Kuroku's basketball dojinchi to, uh, to not come to the con. Um, and uh, sure enough, um, there have been three threat letters that appeared at the area in Kamaket that was reserved for Kuroku's basketball dojin circles. Um, so somebody, uh, so, so folks have left three different letters at that area um, with threats about Kuroku's basketball. There have been a, a bunch of these threats going out in the past uh, couple of months now, I think, in, in Japan. Um, however, uh, the Kamaket Preparations Committee, who organizes Kamaket, uh, have des decided they think these are copycat threats. Uh, somebody put those out there um, who weren't involved with the original one, maybe just for lols, which is kind of a, a sad thought. Um, 
Now, to be clear, the area that they had, had cleared off for Kuroko's basketball was unused, so folks were, were, um, were allowed to like, sit down and use that area. Uh, they weren't encouraged to do it, but they, you know, they could. Uh, and Kamaket's one of those areas where any space where you can sit down is a good thing. So anyone could have you know, dropped something off there. Um, uh, so we'll see. Um, it, it, you know, w what comes of this, but certainly more Kuroko's basketball weirdness over there in Japan. So that's all the news for this week. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll be back next week with more anime and manga news. Thanks for watching.